this one is a little over a year and this one here well we're coming on a year so the largest is over a year less than a year they're all about the same but uh, you can see from the pattern here that it's clearly a bull market it really doesn't show any weakness uh, the pattern is uh, a breakout uh, to run up to a new high and then after that a consolidation with these consistent higher lows you've got one here 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 and here 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 here's another one another one here so we're making these higher lows and we're expecting the next breakout you can see from the past two our base was roughly the top I should say was roughly 800 you can see we moved uh, about 1050 about a 20 plus percent move this one from about a thousand we moved uh, to about 1350 so uh, that one is about a 30 percent move or so so say 20 to 30 percent move this one's going to have a top of around we'll just say 1370 so a 20 percent move is going to be up to about uh, 15 1600 euros and it could be higher than that so looks like we're setting up for a significant move in gold price in euros now of course gold priced in dollars doesn't have the exact same pattern but it it is shaping up to look like a, another move higher uh, we're still consolidating off of that September smackdown and uh, just building a base here although we are rounding up and as I pointed out before when we go out to the weekly and pull up the MACD we can see we're right at that critical crossing point the silver we're still approaching that point we're just almost touching a uh, crossover in silver kind of making an interesting W formation in the MACD if that's what ends up happening uh, let's jump over to the uh, national debt clock this is actually if you go to the debt clock they have a bunch of clocks over there uh, this is the main debt clock and uh, this is the one for the national debt you can see we're approaching the 16 trillion dollar mark right there and uh, 15 9 17 now at the bottom you have these other charts that they've done here and this one is the gold precious metals one so a couple of things I wanted to point out on this one uh, on the left here there's gold holdings uh, by country in ounces which uh, I don't think you can put much stock in that and then there's world precious metals production and uh, you can see that uh, they're incrementing and uh, you can see the ratio there between gold and silver so I don't know what these estimates are based upon um, and I strongly doubt that these are accurate but just as a point of reference the first thing that stands out here is you can see that the production of gold so far this year would be 50 million ounces while the production of silver is uh, less than tenfold of that and so then when we go over and we look at the precious metal reserves they're saying that there's a reserve of uh, 1.6 billion ounces of gold and 16 billion ounces of silver now that one really struck me uh, you can see that that number is dropping rapidly but uh, how they could come up with 16 billion now if you think about the number on gold for the most part the reserves are going to be everything that's been mined uh, they're obviously not going to be counting jewelry but as far as bullion 
the vast majority of whatever's been mined since mining began is going to be represented in this figure and uh, the same thing would hold true for silver so the first question you have to ask we know that that the gold that has been mined since the beginning of time is still with us in a reserve form and of course the reason why is because the price is high enough that there's a very strong incentive to recycle it so and gold isn't used that much in electronics it is used some but the gold that is used in electronics is uh, not that difficult to recover and tends to be recycled because of the price silver on the other hand uh, there's is just not economical at this point to recycle a lot of it a large amount of it ends up in landfills so the question that one would have to ask is are they considering these landfills reserves because this 10 to 1 ratio is holding here they're saying we have 10 times the reserves in physical silver that we have in physical gold I actually think that number is off by a factor of 10 I believe that we have less reserves in silver uh, ounce wise than we do actually in gold but nevertheless it is interesting to see that it is only being pulled out of the ground at a 10 less than a 10 to 1 ratio so that's some food for thought now I wanted to take you over to a story that uh, hit a couple days ago this is the report of Samsung's uh, second quarter earnings and uh, the, the smartphone business propels uh, 41.5 billion dollars in revenues and six billion dollars in profits so I'll read a little bit of this Samsung has just reported its second quarter 2012 earnings and it would seem that the Korean electronics giant is still the king of mobile with an operating profit of 5.9 billion for the period up 79 percent year over year of course the Galaxy S3 and the Galaxy Note have plenty to do with that considering Samsung predicted it would sell 10 million Galaxy S3 units by July and that's just what it did the company reported 41 billion dollars in revenues which is up 1.5 billion from last quarter and up 21 percent year over year Samsung is killing in the TV department though the company does report that demand stays relatively the same year over year. Even still, the company's increased shipments and profitability and the demand for LED TVs in emerging markets helped Samsung increase its portion of LED TV sales from the mid 60% range to a mid 80% share quarter on quarter, according to the release. Memory chips and processors were down a bit from last year, but the real shining star was the phone business, which brought in a $3.64 billion in profit. So there does not appear to be any kind of a slowdown as far as the mobile phone market and uh, other mobile devices. And, uh, you know, all of these devices use silver. And uh, it's still at the prices that we're at, it is just simply not economical to recover that silver. So that's another piece of evidence that throws into doubt that 16 billion dollar uh, 16 billion ounce reserves I just don't think there's anywhere near that number in reserves uh, clearly that somewhere on the earth but I think uh, the vast majority of that 16 billion ounces is now in landfills we're gonna ultimately find out when we hit the wall uh, when the demand for silver for physical silver exceeds the supply at some point we're going to find out what the state of those reserves are and how easy they are to call up and my my guess is they won't be I know that I'm not planning on parting with any silver for any of the prices that we're at now or anywhere even a multiple of those so I suspect that the vast majority of silver stackers feel the same way they're not looking to make 10 or 20 or 30 percent profit they're looking to make 10 20 or 30 fold moves in the price of silver and let's look at the price of silver here on the uh, Atmex site 
I decided to do uh, decided to cover the America the Beautiful coin series again. Now this is not one of my favorites, but it's just uh, stunning how low the prices are. Now there's three years here. There's, uh, they they release I believe they release five coins each year. This is the first year of the series. This is a 2010, and I believe there was a lot of hype with that one. That may be the reason why these prices are so high. You can see that uh, the price on these five ounce ones were at, I didn't check the figures that Atmex has. There's only 32 of those, but we're at $224 for this first year release. And uh, these are going to be the ones that uh, apparently have some collector value at this point. There's only two of the Yellowstone left. And uh, maybe because of the parks they chose, you can see there's Mount Hood in Oregon, there's uh, Hot Springs in Arkansas, Yosemite, Grand Canyon, and Yellowstone. So this is the big year, the first year, and they're running roughly uh, $224, $234 or so. Now, when we get out to the next year, this is where we see uh, apparently a glut because of the pricing on these, the 2011, uh, let's sort these by price. And the 2011 are running about $152, $153. You can see the Glacier, Olympic, Vicksburg, Chickasaw, and Gettysburg, these are all $152, $153. So you're getting five ounces of silver. You're paying about 30 bucks an ounce. Uh, they're saying 279 and 299 per ounce above spot. So what what do the Eagles run? Uh, maybe two bucks, two to three bucks. So if these end up being as rare, and I don't know if there's uh, what the mintage is on these but if these do end up being as rare as the first year series then uh, that seems to be a can't lose scenario considering that you're getting these coins for very very close to uh, what you can get any other bullion coin for and then the last group is the 2012 coins and these are also going to be right at that 152 price range. You've got the El Yunques from Puerto Rico, uh, the Chaco one, and the Acadia National Park. Uh, that's coming out August 10th, and we'll do the numbers on those. So they've got about 2,300 of those. 400 of those and 185 of those so apparently there's two more left for this year to come out and I don't know what those are going to be but seems to me to be quite the deal because uh, regardless of whether or not these coins end up having any kind of numismatic premium to them you're getting them as cheap as you can get anything else uh, you're not I mean you can get junk for lower and you can get bars for lower but if you're talking about coins and you're interested in coins uh, you're not really going to get much better than the two dollar and seventy nine uh, cents per ounce over spot that's going to be a really good deal so I, I haven't picked up any of these but uh, I'm going to keep a close eye on them certainly if we get uh, a drop that some are expecting uh, some are still predicting that we're going to get the drop uh, to test this this point uh, down around 21 22 with the old Bear Stearns high I have serious doubts as to whether we're going to get that low uh, I, I really don't think we'll get down even to the 25 but I could be wrong and if that's the case these uh, America the Beautiful series coins uh, could be a real deal uh, if the uh, prices drop, if the premiums stay just at 279 uh, an ounce above 
above spot, uh, those could end up being a great buy. And we'll talk to you next time.